It's Create Day, my friends, and today I'm going to transform some oversized game pieces into unique home decor. Let's get started. I got these chess pieces from Dollar General. They're $3 a piece, and I decided that I wanted two of them that were about the same height to go together and possibly be bookends. And then the other two I'll do in two different styles. So we're doing three different styles all together. The first thing I want to do is apply these wood rounds onto the bottom of the chest pieces. I'm going to be using E6000. I got the wood rounds from Hobby Lobby in a pack with ovals and rectangles and you get eight of each. And this was just dumb luck on my part that these fit perfectly on the bottom of these pieces. I felt like it gave it a much better base for them to stand on. Then I covered everything with a coat of the white spray paint. And now I'm using Dixie Belle's Hurricane Gray. And I was going to use um, a masonry sealer that has this gritty texture to it but I could not find it. So I decided to improvise and use some sand, mix that into the hurricane gray paint. And then I didn't really um, brush it on to the pieces. It's more of a kind of a tapping motion that I use since the, it had all that sand in there. So I just go around with my paintbrush, applying this over both pieces that I'm doing this way. These are the two that I think I might want to use as bookends. Once the sandy coat was dry, I used the same hur hurricane gray color to go over the top with another coat of paint. And so this I just brushed on as you normally would. I'm mixing some white chalk paint in with the Hurricane Gray. I'm trying to achieve kind of a medium to light gray color that I'm going to put on here. I'm going to be using the same ragging method that I used in a previous video where you brush the paint on and then take a wet rag and dab a lot of it off. And with that um, sandy texture, you just have to be uh, extra careful because there's a lot for the, the rag to catch on to there. And I did have a few times where it pulled off little bits of sand and I had to go back in and uh, repaint. But then I was using this Q-tip. I got the Q-tip wet so that I could go into all those little tight corners. If your base color is a chalk paint, before you do this method, you really want to seal these with a clear sealer so that you don't reactivate that paint underneath because there's a lot of moisture in the rag when you go on here to remove the excess paint. I let these thoroughly dry before I went in to do some dry brushing with my white gesso. I wanted to highlight some of those little sandy areas and I felt like the gesso was a good choice for this. It, it's To me it's super flat. It just was easier to work with than the paint. It didn't seem like it had such an intense color on it. So um, that's kind of going to be my go-to now for when I do dry brushing with white I think. I like the way it turned out it was easier to work with. Um, I got a lot less of the um, heaviness that sometimes you get if you if you don't have your brush dry enough. So anyway, that's what works for me, but you can use regular paint. Um, by all means, you can use regular paint. You don't need to have gesso for this. When they were completely dry, I gave them a coat of the Krylon Fusion Flat Clear. 
Next up is our queen piece. So she's going to get two coats of Dixie Belle's Soft Pink. When that was completely dried, I went in with a chalk paint called Barely Pink. I'm using a moistened sea sponge, get, dipping it in the paint, dabbing that off onto my plate to get the excess removed, and then I'm just going to sponge this around to, I'm starting to kind of mute down this really pink, <laughs> it's really kind of like a little princess pink here. Um, anyway, I want it to be a lot more muted down and just kind of French country looking. So I'm going to do this color all over and then I will be mixing some white into the original color to go on top of that. And here's where I'm just mixing some of my white chalk paint in with the original soft pink color that I painted this piece and I will go ahead and sponge that over the entire piece. I also mixed some of the barely pink color with some white so that I could go back and forth between these two shades and get some good dimension of color on my queen. I wanted the recessed areas to be a little darker so we could look like this has had some little age to it. So I started with the barely pink color because now that I had all that sponging on there, it was considerably lighter. And that was good for starters, but it ended up not being quite dark enough for me. So I, I went in with some other things. So next I tried adding some of the Dixie Belle Grunge Glaze and that helped a little bit but it still wasn't exactly what I had envisioned. So after I get through applying this, you know, you just brush it on and then wipe off the excess. I go ahead and let it dry, give it a coat of sealer and move on to the next step and then I come back in the end and actually touch all those little areas up with some antique wax. And this is the sealer I use, the Select Seal Matte Finish. And this is really convenient because I can just brush this on here and it dries really quickly. Now I want to apply some transfers to this and I'm using this particular one from IOD's Ephemeral Melange book. And what I'm going to do is cut out bits and pieces. I, I want to use some of the wording and I want to use as much of the flowers as I can. These were still kind of big for this type of project, but I didn't have anything smaller and I, I just thought this would be really pretty. So I cut around the flowers and just I just made cuts to make things fit so that I could wrap them around the little skinny body of this and um, still be able to get a good transfer. I tried taping it down to hold it in place 
but it that that tape just didn't stick so it's like eh, forget that I'll just I'll just wing it so I got rid of the tape just placed it on there held it the best I could and transferred it on Then once it was completely transferred, I removed that top uh, transfer sheet and used it to burnish this, the transfer on there to make sure it was completely adhered. And so I just kept adding transfers as I saw fit. When I got to one, I, I thought it was so pretty, it um, said 1922. And unfortunately, a chunk of the last two did not get adhered. And it I lost it, like I couldn't even find it to kind of try to stick it back on there. So that's when I had to get creative. See right here, the back part of that two is gone. So I decided to take a leaf and trim it up, <clears throat> excuse me, so that I could make it look like the leaf was actually covering that part of the two that was missing. It took a lot of finagling to get this just right, but I finally got it on there and I think it looks pretty legit. I'm doing a coat of the clear wax over the entire thing. It will seal the piece and it will also allow me to apply some antique wax where I want to and wipe it back so that it's not too heavy. In we go with the antique wax in those recessed areas. I brush that on, wipe off the excess, and then I can seal the bottom of this with my clear sealer, and this little project is done. There will be pictures of all the finished products at the end of the video. My last chess piece is going to be more of a steampunk style. I'm using a gear from this mold I got off of Amazon and then I'm using this one. It's from Butterflies in Flight by Redesign and I did them with the resin so I got them out of the mold before they were completely set up so that I could curve them around to fit on here. I'm applying these with Aline's Turbo Tacky Glue and I will let this dry overnight. I will attempt to leave uh, Amazon links for the products that I use as well as give a list of all the supplies I used in my description box. My base coat for this is a chalk paint called Tuscan Red. I end up doing two coats of this.
Now I'm going to be using my black acrylic paint and my water mister to create an aged effect by brushing on the paint and then spritzing it with the water and letting it run down all over the entire piece. I just keep adding paint and adding water until I get the look that I want. And it just as a FYI, if you have puppy pads available, these work great to cover your work surface when you're using this much water. It just um, absorbs it and is really easy for cleanup. And here's how it looks when it's all dry. Next I'm going to use some Stays on Ink and Jet Black to apply some of the numbers from the letterpress stamp by Iron Orchid Designs. These did not go on really well um, with the curved surfaces. I had to kind of like go in and repress, but this is going to be, you know, pretty distressed looking, so it actually turned out okay. Even though, like on a different type of project, I would not have been happy with the way these turned out. But for this one, I felt like it was quite fitting, actually, that they were just kind of not quite right. I'm going to use these little gem strips to add some extra detail around the base. And it would have been better if I had thought to um, use these. I didn't even think about it till after the fact. But if I would put these on before I painted the entire piece, then they would have been completely covered in paint and just a lot easier to do that way. So I just put them onto a piece of paper towel painted them with my black chalk paint, and now I'm going to apply them with my Turbo Tacky Glue. I'm going to use some Spanish Copper Rub and Buff to go over all of the little raised areas, the gear, the, the little um, postage thing that I put on the front, the top of the king around the edges. I go over some of the parts on the actual body of it, some of those numbers. Um, it's a fairly dark color, so I applied this fairly liberally just to give it some age and then I can go in with my antique gold rub and buff and just do a little bit of highlighting using a lot less of that than I did of this. Now here we go with the antique gold and I do use a very stiff um, short brush for this. It My finger would have gotten way too much of this on there. I just wanted to highlight some areas with this color. So I just use my little brush. I dip it in the rub and buff and then I wipe it off really good. It's like a dry brushing method. And I just highlight um, some of the areas like the letters on that little postage stamp thing that I put on the front and the gears and then over those little gems that I had glued on. The last thing I want to do to this is to add a key on this black chain that I had. So I'm just going to have to wrap this around and figure out where to hot glue it into place so that it hangs right. And unfortunately, my little 
uh, cordless glue gun conked out on me and I had to bring in my older one that just got glue everywhere. It doesn't have that little precision tip on it. So that was a that was a mess and I went ahead, wrapped this around, got it glued on there, and then I had to try and pick off. You can just see all that glue that's just going everywhere. Ugh. But I had to try and pick off as much of the uh, of the glue as I could. And I, I trimmed off that chain where I wanted it to be. And then I had to go in and actually paint over some of the glue that I couldn't get off. And now I'm taking another one of those gemstones and painting it with my black acrylic paint so that I can put it over that mess of glue to help disguise it. Then I just put a little bit of my gloss Mod Podge over that gemstone so it would be more shiny like the little chain that I put on there. And before I do my final projects, I just wanted to share a viewer's creations Thank you to Sharon Jack for sending me photos of her fabulous projects. Oh my gosh, I love those chairs. They're absolutely gorgeous. She does incredible work. I'm just, I'm just floored. Like, God, there's so many fantastic crafters out there. Thank you, Sharon, for sending these to me. I will be sharing the rest of them in my next video. Now I'm going to make some dice from Dollar Tree wooden dice. I just marked where I want to drill my holes, took a large drill bit, and drilled those out the best I could. I, <clears throat> I didn't actually get a really good result, and I don't know if it was my drill bit or if it's just the type of wood, but uh, I had some of the wood, like, kind of, I don't know, not really cracked, but, you know, it kind of chipped away. And so anyway, I was just experimenting, so it's all good. And I didn't mention it, but I had painted these with white chalk paint before I started. And now I'm just using my black chalk paint to fill in the holes. I wanted to try using this collage paper from Tim Holtz on one of them. And, you know, just decoupage it on there. So I cut a strip. I figured, okay, I can like wrap this around and then cut two pieces to attach to the other two sides. And I just applied this with Mod Podge. But to be honest, I did not like the way this turned out. So I don't know. I don't know if it was the color scheme or... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's just... I ended up painting the holes black, and they didn't show up very well, and I, I just didn't like it. But it was fun to do and see. I mean, this is how we learn. You know, you just got to try stuff. And once it was dry, I just went ahead and sanded off the excess around those little edges with a fingernail file. I applied the other two pieces, sanded those off, and then it was time to go in and I just took my little scissors to punch the holes through to reveal the holes that I had drilled. Then once that was done, I just went ahead and did a final coat of Mod Podge around the entire block. I took two more of those little wooden dice and decided to go a different direction. I painted them with two coats of an acrylic paint called Woodsy Smoke. Then I distressed all the edges with a medium grit sandpaper.
And now I'm going to do some dry brushing with my white gesso, just like I did on the chest piece. Back to the white dice, I am going to do some black wax around this. I did not apply the clear first. I'm just going straight black so it will have a really nice rustic look. I just brush it on and then immediately wipe it back off. Now for the brown dice, I want to go back in with that same letterpress stamp from Iron Orchid Designs and my stays on ink in jet black. I'm just going to go ahead and add these numbers to each side of the dice. I finished these off with a coat of clear matte sealer and all of these little projects are done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find my content useful and will consider subscribing, but most importantly, I hope I've inspired you to go create something. Let's go ahead and take a look at how everything turned out, and I hope to see you next time.